Okay, now let's continue on with domain 3.4 by going over testing. So tabletop exercises. Tabletop exercises are structured discussions used to examine and evaluate an organization's plans and capabilities. The big point about a tabletop exercise is to make sure that every team member knows what they're doing. So all the stakeholders in the organization, they need to know about their roles and responsibility during disaster recovery or continuity of operations. Failover and simulation. So failover and simulation testing involve, involves evaluating the resilience and performance of systems by simulating failover scenarios and validating that backup systems operate effectively. So a failover, it's pretty simple. It's in the word, right? If we have a primary and a standby supposed to take over right away, let's cut off that primary, that active, and see if the, the standby takes over. With the simulation, this involves creating a controlled environment to mimic real world scenarios. So with the simulation and a failover test, it just depends how you wanna do it in your organization on whether or not it's gonna affect production. Obviously, if it does affect production, we wanna put in a maintenance window or an advanced service interruption. With a simulation, we could just sandbox this and then go through our training exercise, which could involve all the stakeholders and different team members that could be involved in continuity of operations. Okay, parallel processing. So parallel processing testing involves conduct, conducting operations in a real-time environment alongside existing systems, enabling a comparison of performance. So parallel processing, this is going to say, hey, we have duplicated our data over here. We've duplicated our production network. Now let's conduct our test. Backups. So what kind of backups are we going to, do to make sure we have cybersecurity resilience. At what frequency are we going to back up? And then are we encrypting this backup to make sure that it is secure? So backup strategies are crucial for data protection and involve cre creating copies of data at different locations, frequencies, and with varying levels of security. So on-site versus off-site. So on-site backups are going to be within that comms closet in that data center, right? They're going to be quick access for data recovery. Off-site backups may be in another like hot site, they may be up in the cloud, and they're essential for protecting against local disasters. So imagine we have a ransomware attack. Having that on-site backup is going to work really well in that case, so we can back up to when we didn't have that ransomware infecting our systems. But what if we have a natural disaster? What good is that on-site backup if all the power goes out, right, from an earthquake or hurricane? That's the purpose of having the off-site, having that geographic dispersion. The frequency. So you have to determine as an organization, based off your risk appetite, the cost, the general overall security, effectiveness, and the objectives of the organization, and how frequently you're going to do backups. So are we going to do a full backup once a week with incremental every single day? Are we doing just a full backup on Sunday and then doing a differential at night every single night, and then another full backup maybe at the start of the month? Just depends on how much storage capability you have and how protective you want to be of your data. So different types of backups. We have snapshots. Snapshots are going to provide quick point in time records of a system. But what we're saying here is, let's go through a scenario when we take a snapshot. If we have a VM that we need to upgrade, and let's say it's running our DCP service. So it's like a Windows Server VM doing DCP. If we got to upgrade, maybe do a patch on there. Maybe upgrade our third-party antivirus software. Before we do those upgrades, even if we're doing them during the maintenance window, take a snapshot because that snapshot is going to have the currently good VM that's working. Then if you go and make those changes and it messes something up in the VM, you can always revert back to that snapshot. Recovery. So this involves strategies and plans to restore systems and data to operational status after loss or corruption. So this is just the planning behind it, right? How will we do that? Will this just be us take a full backup before we make a change on storage? Is it making a snapshot? Is this creating multiple containers of the same service? And then replication and journaling. So to ensure that data is continuously copied to different locations, replication, and changes are meticulously tracked to journaling, this will minimize the risk of significant data loss. So replication is going to be you taking that one-to-one, -one, like mirroring that traffic, sending it off to another location. With journaling, that's just how we do our audits, right? That's how we have our accounting and our reporting of what has been replicated, okay?
power. So we got to think about our power as well. So generators and uninterruptible power supplies or UPS are essential components of power backup solutions, which is very important, especially maybe we're operating in a grid that's not consistent. So we have things like blackouts, brownouts, or rolling blackouts that could potentially be happening if we run data centers in maybe third world countries or maybe just on an electrical grid that is not as consistent, okay? So generators are gonna provide an independent source of electrical power. We want a generator when we're concerned about sustaining our equipment for long periods of time and cost is not an issue, okay? If we have a data center and we say, hey, if power goes out, if a hurricane hits or something happens, we want our gen we want backup for at least four to eight hours while we configure our warm site. We want to do a generator. And UPS is just an immediate backup power. It's just a battery, right? UPS typically will, like, at the strongest, will do two hours. And that depends how much energy is being consumed, right? So an UPS offers immediate backup of power. And what really they're good for, guys, is rolling blackouts and brownouts. So brownouts are when we get a little bit less voltage, not a complete blackout. But some systems, if they're not getting the required voltage, consistently, they're going to turn off or they're going to start shutting down certain uh, services or shut down completely. So if we have rolling blackouts or brownouts in our geographical region, an UPS is a perfect solution. It's cheaper than a generator. It's not as much maintenance. There's less operational and capital expense behind it. And that UPS will be able to serve up additional voltage during that brownout that may only last five to 10 minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and do our quiz. Let me bring this into view here. All right, let me refresh this page. Okay, let's go ahead and do our domain 3.4 quiz, and this will end domain three. Uh, one second. Okay, so question one. What is the primary purpose of implementing failover mechanisms in a high availability environment? So let's go ahead and look at our questions. So that's going to be B, to provide an alternative system when the primary system fails. Question two, what is a significant advantage of offsite backups over onsite backups? So we're going to go with B, high data security. It's not lower cost. It doesn't do simple and more management. Probably more difficult, right, if it's off-site. And it doesn't give us faster recovery times. Why does it give us higher data security? Because it's at a different location. So we don't have to worry about if a natural disaster hits our site of it failing or we're not getting that backup. Question three. Which statement correctly differentiates snapshots from replication and data recovery? That's going to be C. Replication is used for immediate recovery, while snapshots are used for point-in-time recovery. All right, question four. What distinguishes a tabletop exercise from a simulation in the context of disaster recovery testing? So that's going to be B. Tabletop exercises are discussion-based scenarios while simulations involve practical, technical testing. Question five, which of the following best describes the role of an uninterruptible power supply or UPS in comparison to a generator? So C is the right answer. I just want to talk about something here. An UPS provides immediate power during an outage while generators take time to start up. Not all the time, guys. Yes, generators are not as quick because they have to... They, they may have to start up. There is something called ATS switching, right? Or ATS, automatic transfer switching, where that generator's online, we're fueling it, maybe it is connected to the power grid, and then if the power grid goes out, it has stored up energy for an hour, it does its ATS, supposed to deliver power immediately to the data center, and then you have to go and fuel it or do whatever uh, additional powering that it needs. Yes, and ups provides immediate power during an outage. And even with an ATS, you may have a second or two, right? But it's supposed to be an automatic transfer, okay? So 
that is the right answer. But just to know, real world uh, generators can be immediate as well, and that's kind of the point of them in like our cloud data centers. Those generators are definitely being tested to take over as quick as possible. Question six: How does journaling contribute to data integrity? That's going to be B by recording changes to files before they are actually made. 